welcome to Foreign Talk, exclusively from Iraqi News Channel. Today, we're very pleased to have Ms. Jeannie Karnian, and she's NATO Mission Commander in Iraq, Major General Jeannie Karnian. Uh, General, welcome to our interview, and welcome to Iraq. Sabah al-Khair, Mohamed. Shlonak al-Yom, inshallah, I'm prayer. I'm a Saeed, I'm a Koon, al-Yom. ما أكون على على ركية. سعداء جدا باستضافتكم يوم وصل كم. We're very happy to have you, General. General, if you kindly let our viewers know what does the NATO's mission in Iraq entails. First of all, Mohammed, if you allow me, I would like to explain what NATO is before I speak about the mission itself. Yes, please. Uh, NATO is a political military alliance uh, consisting of 30 uh, members uh, who, uh, which has been founded in 1949. So this has been a very successful and powerful alliance for the past 70 years. Yes, and uh, NATO uh, projects stability uh, via partnership uh, with uh, various uh, nations. And uh, currently NATO is involved uh, with 40 different uh, nations in partnerships, and again, to project stability. Hence, the, existing, uh, the existence of NATO mission Iraq, uh, again, to project stability and enable Iraq towards its path to stability. Uh, the NATO currently in Iraq because of the invitation of the Iraqi government, correct? What exactly your roles will be in Iraq? So uh, NATO was invited here by the government of Iraq uh, to assist in uh, developing uh, its capacity within this uh, the, uh, Ministry of Defense. Uh, so NATO currently um, um, advises uh, the higher level of uh, the Ministry of Defense and the Iraqi Armed Forces uh, so that they can um, uh, transform themselves and modernize their processes and their structures. Um, I, we have to highlight um, the uh, challenges that uh, Iraq has had to uh, sustain in the past few years fighting terrorism. Right. And uh, I cannot... Um, um, avoid um, uh, highlighting uh, the immense bravery of the Iraqi armed forces and security forces towards this fight over the past few years. Um, and the victories of uh, the Iraqi security forces uh, help all of us here in, in having a more secure world because of, of, of their brave action of both the Iraqi security forces and the Iraqi people. Um, so we have to understand that for, um, uh, for the defense um, and the Iraqi armed forces, there was a lot of, uh, of uh, emphasis put on the fighting over the past few years. Uh, but to uh, understand that we need to transform and uh, improve ourselves over time, so, which is why NATO Mission Iraq was asked to come here, was to assist the Iraqi armed forces to uh, improve its efficiencies. And this improvement of uh, the efficiency of the Iraqi forces will be in coordination with other uh, stakeholders in Iraq, for example, the coalition forces? You're going to work together or different duties? Or what exactly? So, of course, uh, there is a lot of uh, international partners uh, involved in Iraq uh, yes, to help uh, the various security forces. So, for example, um, the uh, European Union assistance mission mm -hmm. is supporting the police uh, force uh, within the Ministry of Interior. Um, uh, Operation uh, Inherent Resolve is involved into the counter Daesh uh, fight. And you have uh, NATO Mission Iraq, you also have United uh, Nations involved into Iraq. So we, co we collaborate with all of these partners here in our various field of expertise uh, to support stability in Iraq. So basically not a combat mission at all? Uh, NATO Mission Iraq is not a combat uh, right. mission. Mm -hmm. uh, we have subject matter experts yeah. in various fields in the military, mm -hmm. logistics, um, budgeting, um, um, 
various fields of um, training, I believe. Training. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have subject matter experts in all of these areas that mm -hmm. consists of defense, mm -hmm. uh, so that we can enable, again, the Ministry of Defense better. We have both military and civilian advisors as part of NATO Mission Iraq. So basically, the rumors out there that the NATO is taking over the command of the coalition forces have nothing to do with this. It's absolutely false. It's two separate the, okay. missions, uh, right. but we complement each other by, yes. by our missions. You have different base to work and operate in? Are you working together in the same base? We work together in the same bases mm -hmm. and along with our Iraqi partners as well. So we share our bases with Iraqi uh, armed forces as well as the uh, Operation Inherent Resolve as well, coalition members. Yes, ma'am. And that uh, support you providing the Iraqi government and the Minister of Defense and all the security elements uh, also involve in any, any way in humanitarian help in any way or just as a military base? That's well, uh, when, of, when the uh, pandemic uh, yes, the started, yes, yes, when the yes. COVID-19 appeared, yes, uh, we offered support in uh, training uh, for the Iraqi armed forces to, be to better uh, protect themselves against uh, COVID-19, and as well as uh, going through NATO to, uh, to have... Um, uh, medical uh, protective equipment uh, mm -hmm. sent over to Iraq, which was delivered in the last couple of weeks. And then I think we have another uh, shipment coming over uh, to support uh, the Iraqi armed forces uh, work. And will be handled, uh, or did handle, you handle it over to the Ministry of Defense? Correct? To the Ministry of Health. Of Health. Yes. Oh, all right. Excellent. Uh, and uh, you have been for some time in Iraq. How you can evaluate the security Iraqi forces as, a, as far as your experience is concerned, for now. Uh, so are, they are capable because we have, we have, my question is simply because we have heard a couple of statements, recent statements from the coalition forces, officers, Iraq officers that embrace the Iraqi forces and they say they are very much capable and obviously there has been a great improvement. You, you confirm that? I fully statement? agree with that. Right. Uh, we were involved into the, uh, the schools. We were training trainers within right. the Iraqi uh, armed forces schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the level of, of competency and skills is, is, uh, is excellent. Uh, so there was a lot of improvements over the past few years in terms of training. Uh, so the Iraqi uh, armed forces on, are on a really good path to, uh, um, to take uh, their own, um, um, to basically be self-sustaining. What NATO Mission Iraq is trying to do is we're trying to work ourselves out of a job, basically, mm -hmm. uh, because the idea is, is to provide support and then uh, leave Iraq, uh, but pursue the partnership uh, uh, via uh, normal relations. So mm -hmm. NATO, for example, has a lot of different partnership with various nations, uh, with Australia, with Finland, uh, with Jordan, with Tunisia. Uh, so the idea is uh, once uh, the Iraqi um, armed forces are happy with their level of preparedness, then NATO mission Iraq can, can go home, but NATO can pursue the partnership with Iraq uh, forever after that. You have just mentioned, General, that train the trainer programs. Uh, does it focus on the elite forces, counterterrorism forces, or Iraqi forces as a whole? Minister of Defense, Minister of Interior. You have different uh, trainees in, in, in a way. So there are there are um, very two two different levels within which that uh, NATO Mission Iraq uh, is involved mm -hmm. is at the at the tactical level within the training schools right. uh, where we train the trainers and then the Iraqi trainers uh, looked after uh, training their own soldiers themselves uh, this portion has however uh, been paused for now uh, because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we are uh, very much involved and active at the strategic level uh, within the Ministry of Defense and the higher headquarters of the Iraqi Armed Forces, right. where we have deployed experts, again, mm -hmm. in, in the various fields to improve um, the capacity at the uh, strategic level within the MOD. A new mission, I, I believe it was established in Baghdad in October 2018, and you have involved uh, involves around 500 trainees, correct, uh, from 2018 till today. Uh, 
what so, you have achieved so far. So that is absolutely correct. So uh, in the uh, summer of 2018, mm -hmm. uh, the government of Iraq uh, requested NATO to send a, a, a NATO mission Iraq to assist in right. the training and, uh, uh, and the capability building of the uh, MOD. Uh, so um, the mission was founded, um, the, the, the first arrival on the mission mm. were in the October of 2018. Yes. Uh, the uh, mission was then uh, at full speed by October of 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, but since then we had to modify our posture due to various uh, reasons. Uh, but the, uh, the, the one that had the most impact was the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we had to adjust our, our posture based on that. So looking to the future now, mm -hmm. uh, NATO is looking at expanding its uh, mandate, its advisory and training mandate right. in Iraq. Mm -hmm. We are currently planning this uh, with the Iraqi authorities mm -hmm. as to where NATO could do more in Iraq in terms of developing uh, security forces. That development of the security forces will be entails training courses inside Iraq only, or there will be some courses needed to be outside. Uh, so this for, is all, for different field. This is uh, uh, out uh, out of Iraq uh, courses and conferences and seminars are part of the program that NATO has uh, currently. Uh, okay. uh, so uh, this is a very good point because. Um, this allows uh, senior uh, Iraqi, the senior Iraqi leadership uh, to go outside of Iraq uh, and to observe other models in various other countries and basically adapt these models to the Iraqi uh, situation. So to have, uh, to be familiar with different ways of doing things allows the, uh, the Iraqi uh, senior leadership to figure out how they are going to make it happen for their own armed forces here. So uh, the way I understand situations for the NATO now, currently in Iraq, they are basically focusing on only operating on training. You're not involved in any way of supporting Iraq in technical aspects, for example, the borders issue, as you know, the borders from, so, unfortunately, our situation is not the best. So there is any technical support? Uh, no, so for now we are not involved with, uh, with police uh, right. because this is a border police uh, mandate. Uh, but these are areas that we are currently exploring uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, with our higher headquarters where we could potentially expand. You have mentioned earlier that uh, the NATO military alliance have established uh, North American and European countries established on uh, April 4th, 1949. Do you think they are still united in the decision making mm. as NATO, so as organization? NATO is a big family, and yeah, like, I know. and I know. like, there is like, always dispute in the family. Like so. any big families, <laughs> there's always a Correct. discussion. Uh, but this is this is the this is the strength of the alliance is that these right. um, these uh, forums mm. allow for discussion on various security issues and address problems. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and this is what the allies do, is they tackle the difficult uh, security issues um, in their various forums. And uh, we have to realize that when NATO comes to Iraq, Iraq gets 30 friends mm -hmm. in, one, in, one, in one shot, basically, by having uh, NATO coming over and, and assist. And again, it's with a view of developing a long-term partnership with these 30 new friends. Okay, we're very happy to have the 30 new friends. Uh, my question is, uh, this included also the Turkish forces with this 30 new friends? Yes, so Turkey, they have, they have, Turkey they have. has been a member of the, uh, NATO since 1952. Uh, so they have been mm -hmm. a long, uh, long uh, And they have supporting. forces in Iraq now with NATO? Yes, so uh, uh, Turkey deploys, uh, contributes to, uh, to NATO mission Iraq by deploying experts in logistics, transport, and administration. Mm -hmm. And they are part of, of uh, the, the overall contribution in, in developing the capability within the Iraqi armed forces. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Please stay with us.
Welcome back. Major General, thank you so very much for your time once again. Uh, we were talking earlier about the sensitivity of the Turkish forces in Iraq. As you know, there was complaining from the Greece government towards some violation in, on the borders of Turkey. And also, there are also some unwanted activities on the Iraqi borders and the Iraqi government by president, prime minister, our, everybody in the Iraqi government has absolutely refused their activities and have asked all the help they can get to, because they have been in Iraq for almost a year, over a year, they have base already in Iraq. Don't you think that thing will create kind of sensitivity towards uh, Turkish forces involved in training the Iraqi forces with this kind of situation? That's so, the, like, this is a matter really between uh, Iraq and Turkey, and, right. and uh, I know that the uh, NATO Secretary General is in contact regularly with, his, uh, with the Minister of Defense of Turkey to uh, discuss these issues. Uh, but what I have to mention is, is that um, uh, Turkey contributes um, to NATO mission Iraq uh, by providing uh, subject matter experts in uh, logistics, administration, and transport. And uh, they are a valued um, asset to the mission because, again, they contribute towards making the Iraqi armed forces um, able to sustain itself and develop and, and modernize uh, for the future. For any reason, hypothetically speaking, hopefully never this scenario will take a place. My question is, if the Iraqi forces have been forced to defend their sovereignty and they want their Turkish forces out, mm. you are in a very unfortunate situation. You have a member of your organization have been attacked, if you like, and you have a friend, you are coming here to help. So what your position will be? You will be... Well, what, I, what, what side I, will take if there is any sides? I think uh, there would be an opportunity to, uh, to discuss all of these issues in between the various parties. And again, uh, um, through NATO, this could definitely be discussed and, uh, and hopefully resolved very quickly. There is any contract has been signed by the Iraqi government and the NATO? If there is any contract or agreement, official agreement, there is entails in it because you mentioned earlier there is expansion in the and it will be a mutual agreement with both sides, and what you go to, you would like to include more, because you are now on the ground and you know exactly what they need, yes. the Iraqi forces needs. And, and the needs are always in discussion, again, with our Iraqi partners, because we respond to, uh, to their demands and, and where they want to uh, improve. So they are the ones ident identifying the requirements. Uh, but last February, uh, there was an exchange of letter uh, between the government of Iraq and, uh, and the NATO Secretary General, and uh, basically where they, uh, they reaffirmed uh, their commitment uh, towards NATO mission Iraq and the invitation of, of uh, NMI here in Iraq, as well as agreed on uh, the future that any uh, future requirements or expansion would be discussed with, uh, with the government of Iraq. So again, um, this exchange of letter uh, is important to us because we want to make sure that we are welcome when we come here to, uh, to do our uh, activities with our uh, Iraqi partners. The sovereignty of Iraq, the borders of Iraq, the government of Iraq will be totally respected. There will be no breach of any kind to the or any activities at all in the country unless the Iraqi government says so, and that you are firm to that, that, that Absolutely. Uh, we are here at the, the request of the government of Iraq. We've been invited uh, to come here and help, and then we, uh, we provide help and assistance where we are being asked uh, to help. So this is always in, in collaboration and in consultation with our Iraqi partners. Uh, on the personal level, you have served in Bosnia, Afghanistan, al Ghadel Height, and recently you have been signed in Iraq, and we're very, have, we're very happy to have you with us, uh, General. Uh, what do you think is the most challenging post you have seen so far? I, I mean, you didn't see much from Iraq yet, but for the previous posts, what exactly do you think? Oh, they, are, they are all very challenging uh, missions, uh, mm. usually, uh, we operate in uh, areas uh, that 
is different, that is a different culture from, yes, from Canada. Um, so we, we have to be mindful of, uh, of the culture where we evolve in, where um, about the people, get to know the people. Uh, so all of these missions were very different from each other, very different mandate uh, each time. Um, and it makes, um, um, as, as you go up in rank as well, you have different experiences depending on where you are. Uh, but I think um, in terms of Iraq itself, um, we are um, extremely um, honored to be here and be part of uh, the Iraqi project of, um, of improving their armed forces. And uh, we are extremely proud to be here and determined to, to provide as much support as we can. Honor the hours, General. Uh, Major General, uh, I have browsed through your CV and it's impressive. Uh, I have to say that. Uh, how, can make, uh, how can Major General uh, regulate between uh, personal lives and mother of four kids and all these achievements? Uh, a professional, obviously, you reach this level and this rank in the military. It wasn't easy. I'm sure it was challenging. So what is your secret ingredients, if you'd like to share with us? Oh, there's no secret <laughs> no ingredients. Secret? No, Determination. there's no secret. <laughs> I think it's because... Um, I am very passionate about both being a mother and being a soldier. Uh, I, I, um, I am extremely um, grateful for being able to uh, match both uh, a career in the military as well as, as a family. Uh, and I think it's important uh, for me to contribute not only uh, to my community in Canada, but also as a mother. And uh, when, uh, in fact, uh, when we look around the world, when um, both men and women share uh, responsibilities and contribution in their community, in their government, uh, in their armed forces, usually there are countries who are uh, both prosper and stable. Uh, so this is what really um, um, makes me um, extremely proud of, of being able to do. So basically, any goal you would like to achieve, you can achieve it. The sky is the limit, so to speak. That is not because it's the sex is not an obstacle in any way, correct? Yes, and I think most of the time uh, the barriers are in our heads. Uh, you know, we've, we've been correct. told many times that girls are not able to do this correct. or shouldn't be doing that. Correct. And uh, to have dreams and pursue them, I think, is, is the key. Uh, Major General, thank you so very much for your kindness and your time. If you'd like to have a final word for our viewers, we're very grateful for the opportunity. Yes, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm extremely uh, honored uh, to be part of, uh, of this uh, project and uh, of this mission uh, to support Iraq. Uh, in its path to stability, and I uh, wish the best to all Iraqis and to our Iraqi uh, partners as well. Thank, thank you, you so very much. Uh, NATO Mission Commander in Iraq, Major General Jenny Karnian, thank you so very much for your time. Wish you all the best in your mission. Shukran, Mohammed. And thank you very much, dear audience, for your time. Wish you all the best. Please stay safe and stay home. Thank you. We'll see you next time.